Well, you join the retrobate out here in the desert of Nevada. We're in uh, Red Rock Canyon for our wrap-up video. Um, this is the first time I've been in front of the camera this week. Um, it, it, deliberately in front of the camera this week. I think, Ed, uh, once we get back... <laughs> You get stuck in, mate. Once we get back to the UK, I think it's time for uh, AV Forums Weight Watchers group. Um, I think there's uh, even are even. Are you suggesting that these three quarter of a litre cans of Mexican beer aren't doing my figure any good? Uh, that and all the burgers and steaks and everything As else. For your liver, well, I don't want to talk about that. So uh, the idea of this video, um, we're standing in the desert. Uh, people are that side of the camera. You can't see them, um, staring at us, wondering why there's three flat blokes. <laughs> Um, started <laughs> blokes in a desert <laughs> talking to a camera but anyway let's get down to business CES uh, 2017 more of uh, evolution rather than revolution when it came to TV Steve but um, Dolby Vision finally getting some traction because up until now um, they only had one manufacturer behind them and no sign of any software other than streaming yeah, big changes for Dolby Vision. Uh, I like the format. I think it's it's a very clever system. It, it delivers the goods, but up until now, no one's been delivering uh, other than LG a display that supports it. And there were no there was no way of playing it. There were no players. There were no discs. You could just stream it off of uh, Netflix. Now you've got Sony on board. You've got three uh, players that support Dolby Vision, and you've got Warner's and Universal and Lionsgate who've announced that they'll be doing Dolby Vision discs. So now Dolby Vision is becoming a serious player, I think, and we'll be interested to see how the other manufacturers respond after this show. I think the interesting thing was uh, what Craig uh, uh, Panasonic said uh, when questioned about uh, Dolby Vision. I think they they were intimating that perhaps Sony made that decision overnight before the show actually started to announce that they were going to go Dolby Vision. Yeah, I think we, we could tell that from going to Dolby's stand yesterday where um, they had lots of stuff pre-prepared and it looked like Sony was very, very last minute. Yeah, uh, they didn't even have one of the TVs on the stand. They just had a sign, and yeah. well, actually, it was a, no. it was an XD ninety four. They had a wasn't TV it? there, yeah. but they had nothing in there. Actually, yeah. So Dolby Vision, big story. Uh, OLED, really big story this year. Um, we'll come to you in a minute, Ed. You just enjoy your I'm beer. Fine. Keep drinking. Don't worry about me Keep drinking. Um, so you know, uh, OLED, really big for this year's show. Um, we had Sony launching an OLED TV. We had Panasonic confirming a sixty five inch TV, and also hinting that perhaps in February at their convention they might have more in terms of a TV lineup to announce for Europe uh, one thing you got to remember over here is that Panasonic do not sell TVs in the US market um, so the OLED announcement was really just for the European market and for the UK so um, OLED a big thing now they're all using obviously LG panels but the, all of them were stressing that uh, the picture processing was their own yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think that's good news. I mean, yes, they're all LG panels, but the bit of competition in the OLED market, I like, I'd love to see Panasonic's uh, colour accuracy applied to OLED, Sony's motion handling applied to OLED, and obviously LG, well, they've got a full raft of HDR features now. They've got all of them. They've got Dolby Vision, HDR10, they've got HLG, and they've also got Technicolor. So great news for everyone, really. Um, not so great news for some of our members who seem to be making um, quite a big fuss about it is no 3D this year on any TVs. I think we've seen this coming for a number of years now. Um, certainly last year there was only really LG and, and Panasonic who were keeping 3D alive on the TVs and this time around none of them have them. Yeah, as soon as Samsung dropped it entirely from their range and a number of other manufacturers followed suit, it was inevitable that 3D days were numbered. This year, unfortunately for Panasonic, because their TV was shown on, on the first day before the show, um, when we got here, they took the massive amount of stick for dropping 3D from their OLED TV. But as it turns out, every single manufacturer has now dropped 3D. There is no TV being made in the world that supports 3D. So if you're a fan of 3D, I'm really sorry, don't shoot the messenger, but either keep the TV you've already got or buy a projector that supports 3D. But if you're looking for a new 3D TV, TV in 2017, you're not going to find it. it doesn't exist. So there's no point doing uh, petitions to try and get it to come back. It's gone. It's finished. It's over. Yeah. Uh, you know, thinking about that, we could petition for 8-Track to come back, Ed. Yeah, why not? Um, I mean, we were saying earlier on, um, you only got to wait, we reckon, until 2040, and they're going to try again. Yeah. That's, that's how it works. That's how 3D yeah. comes around roughly every 30 years. So... Yeah. You know, just settle back, enjoy the other technology in the meantime, and 3D will be, be back, you know, in time for you to draw your old age pension. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you mentioned projectors there. I think we'll probably see projectors dropping 3D in, in, the, in the future. I don't think it'll stay around there, but interesting to see that JVC have updated their DLA projectors. Um, more a case of, again, evolution rather than fine revolution. Fine-tuning, yeah. fine adding HDR and so on. 
Optoma uh, were here. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Optoma. Uh, they were just too far away for us to get to in any reasonable time and get back and, and be able to do what we needed to do elsewhere. Um, but they do have 4K models. But we did get to see Vivitech uh, DLP projector. Um, nice image. Something that's going to work for people who perhaps don't have bat caves like we do, Steve, and a bit of ambient light and so on. It, it held up really well picture-wise. Yeah, it looked really good. Um, and it uses the uh, DLP, um, Texas Instruments DLP 4K chip, which uh, isn't native 4K, but flashes enough so you can deliver 8 million pixels on the screen. Interestingly, they had dropped 3D from that model. So there you go. It's even started with projectors. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'll see a lot more throughout the year in terms of projectors, but it, interesting that we're starting to see uh, 4K capability at a price point well below where Sony are currently priced. Yep. Okay, so uh, that's TVs, like we say, evolution rather than revolution. We'll get into it in a lot more detail uh, in the podcast uh, once we get back to the UK. So that's a podcast coming on the 19th of December. So keep your eyes out for that one. Not December, it's January, get it into gear, 19th of, <laughs> 19th of January. You see, and I'm not even drinking and I'm getting it wrong. Um, it's the fumes coming off this. Is it? Is that what it is? <laughs> okay. Uh, right, so that's TVs and projectors. So let's move on to audio. So Ed's here for the first time. Um, you've never been to Vegas before. What did you think of Vegas the city? Um, right, uh, I don't mean to be rude if anyone from Vegas happens to happen upon this video. I'm afraid Las Vegas is one of my very least favourite places on earth. However... This is fantastic. Um, it is, isn't it? So just get out of Vegas and come, can we can we find some way of exhibiting in the middle of this? That would be fantastic. Show, um, as distinct from Vegas, has quite a lot going for it. I mean, obviously, it's all a bit spread out over different locations. But um, no, there are some interesting things. Uh, I'm afraid the news for those of us who earn, you know, sort of normal salaries wasn't so exciting. But the... Uh, the, the movement at the super high end, the sort of supercar equivalent products, uh, there are some, there's some serious, serious engineering and serious technology breaking cover. That moon uh, monoblock at $118,000 a pair, um, yes, okay, it's not money you lose down the back of the sofa, but what a sound. I mean, I did try and record it on the microphones, but it, it wasn't going to get the job done. No, it's, there, that's, that's like listening to high-end speakers down a telephone line, Absolutely, isn't it? but there are some, there is some, some, some great new, new items breaking cover at the, at the high end. At the more sensible point, um, again, like the televisions, there's nothing, we're, we're in the middle of a, a, a period of stable technology, so we're not really seeing much in the way of new features but we are refining and just making things better control apps are getting better interestingly it got lost in the noise on the technic stand but they've made some further refinements to their upmp control app and things like that just making your experience of consuming audio however you do it just that little bit better just that little bit more stable just that little bit more enjoyable more streaming service items we saw that tidal announcement um, this for many people is going to be their first experience of high-res audio in a sensible and easy to get hold of way so yeah we it's not there's no you know lightning unbelievable moment but everything's getting slightly better and after 27 uh, 2016 rather I could you know if that was the metaphor for the year everything gets slightly better I'd be quite happy with that I'm getting drunk off your fumes. <laughs> <laughs> that stinks. <laughs> what is it you're drinking? I have got a Montejo or Monteo. I don't know. It's uh, proudly made in Mexico. Uh, it's only four and a half percent. All right. Okay. It stinks. I, anyway, so um, maybe just be Ed. The, <laughs> <laughs> don't be cruel. Uh, right. So the Venetian, um, a bit different from the LVCC. We, we dropped you in the LVCC. You only managed to do South Hall. Mm. Um, it's massive. It's it's all the trade stands and all the rest of it. Um, Venetian, a bit more like Bristol, but on crack. Bristol on steroids, yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting. Do you know what? Uh, later on this year, I'm going out to Munich, the high-end show there. I do think that Munich has stolen CES is Thunder as a hi-fi show now. It is the world's get-together for hi-fi. But nonetheless, the Venetian... It, there's a familiarity. People have been using those rooms for years. People were getting great sounds out of those rooms. I heard three or four systems where they didn't sound good for a hi-fi show. They sounded really, really good. You could make some. You could make some genuine purchasing decisions here if, of course, it wasn't trade only. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, fantastic scenery out here. We came out here yesterday, Steve, and. Uh, the idea was to have weather like this and to film your inserts for the best uh, TV 
uh, video yes. and it didn't quite work, did it? That was the plan. And if you watch the video, you'll see you can't see any of this. <laughs> All you can see is me in some clouds because it was a bit damp. He does uh, look lovely and angry though, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> well, bitter and twisted, granted. Yeah, yeah. I think he overkill on the I am damp. Uh, line. It was easy for you to say you were sat in the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so to wrap up on this video, like I said, we're going to go into this in far more depth in the podcast. So listen to the podcast, please. Um, sorry if I'm blinking. The sun is now right in my eye line. Um, so highlights of the show. Steve, uh, what was your favourite thing that you saw while you were here in Vegas and not necessarily the show, if, if there wasn't any highlights there? <laughs> no, this show, I, I, for me, and I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only person that thinks this, but I was really impressed with uh, LG's W7 wallpaper TV. I mean, two millimetres thick. You stick it on the wall with magnets. You've got the Atmos soundbar as well. Uh, that was well impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Um, bit of an unknown entity when you're talking about Panasonic and Sony's OLEDs. We could only see what was on the stand. Um, and again, it was playing pretty generic footage. It's, it's kind of impossible to draw any conclusions. The designs, they've, they've all gone in a separate way. So Panasonic's got the soundbar. I'm not sure if I like that soundbar. I'm not sure if I like the design. Sony, on the other hand, the edge of the screen actually sits on your surface. Um, it has toughened glass and it, it, and they've thought about that. But again, it's 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 a monolith design, so it's sitting slightly yeah. backwards on the stand. So those are, are, I can't really comment and say whether I like them or not because I think we really need to see them in more depth. So I'll, I'm going to agree with you. Wallpaper TV. Um, just as an industrial design concept. Pure wow factor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. total wow, wow factor. It had the, and, and the video uh, title says it all. I mean, you just look at the numbers and people are interested in it because it says wallpaper. Mm. They want to know how it is. So um, moving on, Ed, you didn't see any of the TVs. Uh, I didn't, but I'm going to say um, I was the, the idiot transcribing the press conferences, so most of the mistakes in the news stories are my fault. Yeah, we um, know that. Yeah, I know. I... I was quite taken with the Sony OLED, simply because there's an element of Sony getting a bit of its mojo back. The using the the, the actual screen as a driver. Yeah. The, yeah. The design isn't to everyone's taste, but it's bold. It's it's a company that's slowly but surely finding its place in the market again. Yeah. And that you know that on a wider level makes me happy. Yeah. Um, in an audio sense, of the word, <laughs> I'm not making this up. My product of CES is a loudspeaker, and it's from New York, and it's made by a company called Devore Fidelity. Unfortunately, the speaker itself is called the Orangutan 96. <laughs> I can't help that. It's not my fault. I didn't name it. I also need to point out that it costs $11,000. I also need to point out that it is the single best loudspeaker I've ever heard at any hi-fi show in the entire time I've been doing them. And I need to find an excuse to get my hands on a pair in my house. I'll bring more information up on the podcast and I'll get some pictures together. It was absolutely brilliant. And it's called an orangutan. Well, what could you possibly ask for? Yeah, totally. And uh, we're standing in the desert and you can tell it's an American desert because I don't know if it's picking it up on the microphone here, but um, every now and again, we get a lovely V8 going past and there's just, seen, just been a, a Mustang GT350 going past and it made a lovely, lovely crackle. Um, anyway, I think that's about enough from uh, the desert yeah, here in Red Rock Canyon. <laughs> well, well, you, well, you are drinking paint stripper or whatever it is you're drinking. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we might go blind on the fumes from Ed's beer. Uh, God knows what it's doing to him because he's drinking it. Uh, if you want to watch all our videos from CES, then we have a playlist on YouTube uh, called CES 2017. Go and watch that uh, from our YouTube page. Uh, stay tuned for the podcast. It's coming in a few days' time. It will be on iTunes, it'll be on YouTube, and, of course, it'll be on AV Forums. Thank you very much for watching our coverage. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we hope we've done it a little bit differently from everybody else that comes to this show and reports on it. Um, we do it for you guys, we do it for the members of AV Forums, uh, we know what you like and we try and add a little bit of humour in there and a little bit of irrelevance from Ed um, and uh, we've had a good time and if you want to see all of Ed's vlogs uh, there is a page on AV Forums where you, can, where you can look at all those videos or there is a playlist on YouTube. Thank you very much for listening and watching and we'll see you in a bit.